since you're on. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, thank you. Um, Your Honor, the case is set um, this morning for resentencing. Um, I would just like to um, kind of um, explain what I, I believe is to occur today. The Court of Appeals issued an opinion and a mandate that the um, sentencing was outside the aggravated or was outside the parameters of the sentencing range and was in the aggravated range and the Court of Appeals has determined that that was improper. Um, so I believe today what is to occur is the court is to sentence Ms. Um, Ms. Kenny within the sentencing range, which I believe is 12 to 18 months in the Department of Corrections. Uh, the comment I would make is that I believe this court made the appropriate ruling when it issued its sentence in January of 2020. Um, but I believe that the Court of Appeals has issued their mandate and the court must um, follow that mandate. Ms. Nielsen. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, hateful and hurtful things have been said about Ms. Kenny that are simply not true. Mr. May called her the devil. We know that is totally improper for a prosecutor to say inside a courtroom in a court proceeding, but he walked directly outside the courthouse to the media and did what he couldn't do in court. Not only were his remarks inappropriate and prejudicial, but they don't describe Crystal. Crystal Kenny had the courage and the principle to tell the truth. Telling the truth regardless of the expense to herself, her life, her family. And she did it not for a deal, but because it was the right thing to do. To ensure that man that was still walking freely in our community, interacting with people, and the man who brutally killed his own fiance and mother of his child could be brought to justice. Miss Kenny didn't kill Kelsey Barrett. She wasn't involved in the planning or murder of Kelsey Barrett on November 22nd, 2018. She was in a different state altogether. After Miss Barrett had been killed, Miss Kenny followed the direction of a man who had threatened harm against her family, against her children, and who she now vividly knew would carry out that violence. One could say, well, we don't believe that Patrick Frazee was threatening Crystal or her family. Well, he did it again in writing, contacting people to have Crystal's family killed so she couldn't or wouldn't testify at his trial. And what has become of that documented threat against Crystal and her family by a convicted killer? Nothing. No charges brought, no protection for Crystal, just more vitriol directed against the one person who, as I see it, is responsible for ensuring that Patrick Frazee was brought to justice. Ms. Kenny is not going to speak today. She gave a heartfelt apology at her original sentencing hearing. She knows it wasn't and will never be enough, but she had the courage and the morality and the humanity to offer it. Despite Mr. May trying to change the deal at the last minute, patting her on the back and offering her encouragement to her face, and then calling her the devil outside the courthouse, Ms. Kenny has maintained integrity. She's remained true, honest, and sincere. And today we ask you to hold Mr. May to his word, as Crystal Kenny as to hers and sentence her in the range of 12 to 18 months. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, and uh, I absolutely accept uh, Ms. Nielsen's statement as an officer of the court. Ms. Kenny, can you nod your head? Yes, if you are agreeing that you're not going to say anything. Be able to nod your head. Thank you, and record reflect, I can't see Ms. Uh, Kenny nodding her head. I just wanted to make sure that she had uh, her right to speak. Well. This matter comes before the court for resentencing following a remand from the Court of Appeals. I previously sentenced Ms. Kenny in the aggravated range, uh, maximum aggravated range of three years for her plea 
tampering with physical evidence. The Court of Appeals has ordered me to resentence Ms. Kenny within the presumptive range of one year to 18 months. In preparation for the resentencing, I went back and reviewed the file. I reviewed Ms. Kenny's letters of support, lack of criminal record, lack of substance abuse history, and the original probation screening device, which predicted that she would be at minimum risk to reoffend. The probation department did recommend a sentence within the maximum range possible due to the nature of the, the offense and the loss of life involved in this case. I have again considered the statutory factors under 18.1.102.5, which requires the court to punish and impose a sentence you deserve in relationship to the seriousness of the offense. I have considered your sentence as opposed to others and provide fair and consistent treatment to all people who appear with similar offenses. I have considered the responsibility to prevent crime, promote respect for the law, and deter others likely to commit a similar offense. And to select a sentence to address your individual characteristics and to promote acceptance of responsibility and provide healing for the victims of the community. I went back and reviewed your statement to me that when I accepted your plea, and I quote, I learned that Patrick Tracy had committed a homicide on approximately November 22, 2018 in Teller County. I knew that law enforcement would be investigating that case. I took the victim's cell phone with the intent to impair the phone's availability in the investigation. I had no right or authority to move the victim's cell phone, and that occurred between November 24 and November 25 in Teller County. Ms. Kenney, that statement was legally acceptable to the district attorney and myself for purposes of the plea. I understand and appreciate that after law enforcement confronted you with your involvement, you negotiated a very favorable plea agreement, and you cooperated with law enforcement, and I believe your testimony at trial was helpful, very helpful to the prosecution. Your very generic explanation of your involvement, however, greatly understates your involvement in this terrible crime. I have no illusion that any sentence I reimpose will provide any healing for the Barrett family or to the Teller County community. You had a lengthy relationship with Mr. Tracy before the murder of Kelsey Barrett. You even spent time with Kaylee before her murder, Kelsey Barrett's murder, and you had to know that Mr. Tracy's allegations that Kaylee had been subjected to some type of child abuse were false. Mr. Tracy solicited you three times to kill Kelsey Barrett. You went to the house. You talked to Kelsey. You could have warned her. You could have called law enforcement. You could have prevented the murder and done the right thing that a person of honor or sense of right and wrong would do, but you did nothing. After Mr. Tracy called you in Idaho and told you that you had a mess to clean up, you made arrangements, drove basically all the straight through the night, the Woodland Park with bleach and something akin to a hazmat suit. You spent hours cleaning up a brutal and horrific murder scene. After you cleaned up that murder scene, you drove out to the Tracy home to see Mr. Tracy and Kaylee, and you stopped and picked up food for everyone. This is just after you spent hours scouring the bloody murder scene. You then went to the ranch with Mr. Tracy to retrieve Kelsey's property and were present when it was burned. You made a conscious decision to use Kelsey's cell phone to mislead her parents, employers, and law enforcement and to create a false impression that she was alive. And you destroyed that phone in an attempt to escape your detection. Your actions were not impulsive. They were not spur of the moment. They took place over several days to tamper with evidence when you knew Kelsey had been murdered in her own home. You had hours and hours and hundreds of miles on your drive back from Idaho to Colorado to then do the right thing, call law enforcement, 
We never said a word until you were later confronted by law enforcement. The Court of Appeals described the findings I made regarding your involvement when I imposed an aggravated sentence as disconcerting. I greatly respect the Court of Appeals and am required by law to follow their ruling, and I will. And I will sentence you within the presumptive range. However, I strongly disagree with their description of your involvement as disconcerting. I find again, as I did at your original sentencing, that your actions were cold, calculating, cruel, and devoid of any compassion for human life. Your actions deserve the maximum sentence allowed by law, and I hereby re-sentence you to 18 months to Colorado Department of Corrections, followed by one year of mandatory parole. Ms. Kenny, I hope that you do something positive with your life on your release. I also want to apologize to the Barrett family for the pain caused by this re-sentencing. Ms. Nielsen, you have uh, credit for time served. I believe I sentenced her on January 28th. Your Honor, um, usually that calculation is for pre-sentence confinement. Since she has been in the Department of Corrections, I think that time comp will be making that calculation upon receipt of the minimus. I won't make any additional findings then. Uh, Ms. Neiman, are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yes, Your Honor. I was going to suggest that the court non pro the sentence back to the original sentencing date of January 28th, 2020. Ms. Nielsen, any objection to that? No, sir. All right, that'll be the order of the court. Thank you. We'll be in recess.